recent wildfire devastation across California of historic proportions, the use of larger firefighting aircraft is becoming more common. While these larger aircraft have the ability to safely and effectively reduce these fires, they also require increased awareness to work around them. Do you know how much weight is being delivered aerially over the top of you in a wildland fire? This test was with 9,000 pounds of fire retardant out of the S2. Imagine what could happen under a low dropout of a VLAT that can drop up to 170,000 pounds. That's around the weight of over six Type 3 fire engines falling from the sky. Controlled tests have been conducted by the U.S. Forest Service under optimal conditions. Here are some guidelines to keep you safe. The width of these drops can vary from 95 feet for lats and upwards of 130 feet for V-lats. For safety precaution, we're asking firefighters to stay an additional 50 feet beyond those boundaries. Drop lengths can vary. Uh, S2s um, and the, the larger tankers, uh, we're looking anywhere from 300 to 1800 feet of uh, length and line. When you include the very large air tankers, uh, we're looking at upwards of a, a mile. Drop heights, we can vary a large air tanker. We can anticipate 150 feet above the vegetation. When we include the very large air tankers, the minimum that we're, we're shooting for is 200 feet above the highest vegetation. So these are just general guidelines that follow from the ground. You never want to find yourself in front or behind the general drop zone of these air tankers. We don't want to drive it in and hurt anybody or damage any equipment. We want to turn that into a, a FOS check rain. A well-executed airdrop is supposed to rain down to be safe and effective. Wildland firefighting conditions are often not ideal. Pilots give their best estimates for drop height, but rising terrain, unexpected crosswinds, or aircraft malfunctions can cause drops to be lower than intended. You're going to see so many different type of aircraft that are introduced into the fire department aviation world. When we start to place the lats and the V-lats into the picture, those folks on the ground need to be very, very aware of their surroundings and the risk that is involved with having uh, helicopters and fixed-wing aircraft assigned to their fire. It's always important when you're out there to have your head on a swivel and paying attention to uh, those command frequencies, the air-to-ground frequencies. Yeah, I copy working uh, north to south on the uh, east road to get to make the turn onto Powerline Road. You may even find yourself in a situation where you can't make that communication if they're not up on the right air ground or vice versa. So those are the things that you need to pay attention to and, and make sure that your crew is in a safe location while they're making their drops. Uh, it's important to take note of uh, smoke conditions. Uh, those can affect our visibility from the air uh, when we're maneuvering for, for drops. clear that line to make sure that we're not impacted by any aerial hazards uh, or debris that could be kicked up from aircraft dropping. It's important to remember that if diligence to safety and the mission is not maintained, even the smallest of firefighting aircraft can cause harm. Our job is inherently risky. It's also your job to do what you can to alleviate risk. Copy that. Turn final. Final clear for dry run.